guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Check it out. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that starting in March of 2020, I made the decision to move farther and farther off the grid. While I'm not completely off grid yet, it is time to start the second large phase of doing that. I'll leave a link to the entire series below, but I started by building a 1200 watt solar array. Here's a picture of it here. Using these 100 watt solar panels, a charge controller similar to this one, and an inverter similar to the one you see on the ground. There was a learning curve, right? I was able to figure out what angle to put my panels and what direction to face my panels, but I didn't know everything that I probably should have known to get started. And as a result, I put some money into it that I probably could have put in better places. Namely, these panels. These 100 watt panels are great for campers, RVs, and small off-grid installations. But if you're planning on taking your entire home off the grid, you're probably gonna wanna get larger panels. This is a Calpha 200 watt solar panel, and this is going to be the cornerstone of my new solar array. I picked up five of these panels. I plan on getting another five here before spring hits. And we're gonna build a much larger 2000 watt array to supplement the 1200 watts we already have. 3200 watts in total between the two systems and hopefully we'll be rolling in style. These Calpha panels, they're 200 watts, they're 18 volts uh, open wattage, so they're a 12 volt system. So you can link these in series or in parallel or a combination of both to get the voltage or amperage you're looking for. Now this system here with these is going to be installed right above me, right on this garage here. It's, a, it's not a perfect angle, but it almost faces perfectly out to where I want my panels to face, which is that way. <laughs> so I'm really lucky that the house is positioned in the right angle for that. We're gonna install this. We're gonna set them all up. I'm going to put my batteries, and I've got these um, LiPo batteries here, or they're lithium ion batteries, and these are great batteries for solar setups like this. So we're gonna set this whole system up, and we're gonna have it running. This system that I originally had, again, here's a picture of what I've got, and we'll take a walk out there. I'll show you some of the big differences was um, set up originally with one of these surplus cell phone reserve batteries, these massive batteries that they put in cell towers. These batteries get used a whole bunch and then we install them and then they say, okay, well, they're only down to like 80% charge. They surplus them out. I went down to Raleigh and picked up one of these right from the factory when they were selling them. A nice enclosure. And again, there's a whole video series on the stuff that I used for this first setup. But from the mistakes there, like going from that to what I'm going to now, we're gonna have almost three times the battery capacity. So that's, think of that as your gas tank. And then we're gonna have twice, almost twice, the amount of solar incoming to charge that gas tank. So we're gonna be looking at a whole lot more power, a whole lot more opportunity to keep our setup running in the event that the uh, cloud cover is really strong for a couple days or we have a storm come through or something like that. And then on normal days when the sun is shining and those batteries are topped off, the entire system, our entire home, or most of it anyway, about two thirds of it, will be operated off of panels like these. Now, of course, if you're gonna build a solar setup, the things that I learned from before is, well, yes, this was a good choice. This was a uh, Amazon power pack and, and I'm still using it and uh, we're gonna be using one just like it for the new array. But you wanna look at how many amps these things put out. If you're going to expand the system, you're gonna want a higher amperage. So. This is a 60, we're gonna be getting one that's a 100 amp hour, or 100 amp controller, and that's gonna allow us to have more panels linked up to it. This system here with these 18 volt, we're gonna put these where we have a 48 volt system. We're gonna run our batteries in 48 volts, and we're gonna run an inverter in 48 volts. The initial system I put together was 24 volts. This was wired at 24 volts with a maximum amount available wattage coming into it at 1600 watts. Again, we opted for 1200. And then originally I had an aftermarket or an off-brand uh, inverter, 12 or in this case, 24 to 120 volt inverter. That there didn't last long. And it also produced a lot of line noise. It said it was pure sine wave. I don't believe it was. We had a lot of interference with ob uh, computers and with radio gear. So I got rid of that and I bought an Ames inverter that inverter has done extremely well. We're gonna do the same thing here. This, this is just a backup that I have here for display, but we're gonna put a 48 volt Ames inverter in place here. We might even go with one that combines these two items together. We'll have to see how that plays out. But think of this video as the start of a brand new series of our next solar setup. And we're gonna use these Calpha 
panels here, which are really, really nice. I like the, the dark black look to them. I can't remember. I know there's two types of panels that you can get, and this is uh, the one style of it. It's kind of a cloudy day, but I do want to take these outside and show you what they can do even in cloudy weather. So I'm going to go outside. We'll pause the camera. We'll set this thing up. I'll hook up a voltmeter to it. Actually, I think what I'll do is hook up one of those emergency battery packs that I have, and we'll see what kind of wattage it can pull in on a cloudy day in the middle of winter. This is literally the day that I'm filming this is the shortest day of the year. So this is going to be the worst possible output you could get from a solar panel. How's that for realistic testing, right? I'm not giving you a high desert in the middle of summer uh, review. I'm giving you the idea of what you can realistically hope to get out of a panel like this on a normal day. I can't wait for this whole thing to play out. Of course, this is going to take many months to put all this stuff together. But this being part one, this being the cornerstone of this, I wanted to show this off to you. So let's take it outside and see what it can do. All right. Well, I'm not lying. There is no shade here because there's no sun there. We are in a full cloud cover moment here. And I wanted to show you that even in a condition like this, where it looks like it's about seven or eight o'clock at night in the summer, we are putting out about 40 to 50 watts out of the 200. And I'm going to get the camera off and show you that up close here in a second. But I wanted you to see what realistically you're going to get out of a panel. And this is the reason why, and again, a mistake that I made early on. I thought 1200 watts, and then I calculated how many hours of sunlight per day, and I figured, oh, I'm going to be doing just fine. That's not often the case. These panels are rated for 200 watts maximum. Real world conditions with light cloud cover, or in a case like today, heavy cloud cover, that makes it a bit more difficult to get those wattages that you're looking for. So you really want to double the amount of wattage you think you need. And that's why I decided to go with this. This is a great looking panel and it comes with a good warranty as well. So we're going to go ahead. I'll get the camera off. I'll show you up close. I'll show you the cloud cover. And then hopefully we'll get a spot where the sun comes through and I can give you the full. Again, this is the worst day of the year. The, the shortest day of the year. The sun is the lowest in the horizon it's going to be. This rating is going to give you the worst possible output. And then you can pretty much guess if it can do that, what it can do on a nice summer, summer day. Let's check it out. Okay, well, here's the panel. And as you can see, I mean, there's some reflection, I guess, a little bit of light coming through here, but I wasn't kidding. We are in uh, very heavy clouds. You can see the darkness of these clouds, right? And there are some blue spots. If you look over there, we do have some sunlight breaking through, but not much of it. So I would say this is probably the heaviest cloud cover you're going to see a panel work in. And let's see what kind of output we are getting out of that. Okay, so even in its absolute worst performance, it's getting 38 watts. Worst day, worst kind of conditions for input, and we're still getting, oh, you know, let's see, what, what we got, one-eighth of its rated power, 40 watts, or one-quarter, I guess a little less than a quarter, one-fifth of its rated power. So that is the worst-case scenario. So now we play a little bit of a waiting game here, and we're going to wait and see if we can get full sunlight here, and we'll see what we can get with full sunlight. All right, here we are in the sunlight. And as you can see, it's actually outperforming what it should be. 217 watts coming in on the worst day of the year. 213 watts. So we're looking over maximum output. And that's, that's awesome. So hold on, let me back up. We're not even really in full sunlight. I'm going to point that out here in a second here. As you can see my, my shade here. I had to move the panel. The sun moved before the sun came back. There we are. We are still in partial clouds, as you can see, and the sun is partially hidden by the trees. We live in a hill, and the sun never clears the hills in the wintertime. It goes through those trees, so not a very, not a very perfect way of doing this, but... Okay, still with partial cloud cover, 160 watts, so not bad at all. You can see it kind of moving around as the clouds come and go. We can just get a moment or two of total sunlight. Yeah, we're getting close to the maximum. Yeah, not bad. So you can see the panel's almost in sunlight. It's still pretty, uh, pretty dim here. We got cloud cover pretty heavy, but 185 watts there in, in partial cloud cover. Certainly not bad. And just so you don't think that there's any voodoo going on here, Come around here and you can see it's hooked directly to this. 
And I'll bring you up here and show you. Here's our tag information. 200 watt solar panel. And it's the SPR-200 is the model. Rated for 200 watts, but we've already seen it go past that. That's pretty cool. And give you dimensions and stuff. If you need all that information, I'll leave it up there for another second. But yeah, pretty cool little setup. Pretty cool little setup. You can see, still not in complete sunlight, but producing almost its rated value. And occasionally when the clouds break above its rated value. So hard to complain. Calpha, 200 watt. And there he goes, the sun again. It just disappeared. Hopefully you'll choose to follow me along with this next phase. I'm building a new solar array here at Farpoint Farms. Till next time, my friends. Take care.